the budget. Get us louder. It's already, okay. already, already, already. So. So tantric teachings or the esoteric teachings are specialized teachings which are meant for, I mean, tailored for specific disciples with specific you know, physiological structures and um, predispositions and so forth, whereas Sutrayana, which is a general teaching, is meant for general, um, uh, under, uh, the foundational teachings of the Buddha. So, I mainly, the experience mainly through practice of the so uh, my approach may, mainly is from the sutra point of view, which is meant for general public. Hmm? So entire sentient being, uh, as a result, some some experience here, and I think uh, sentient being, all my friend, no one. As a negative force. So sometimes I scastically mention these radical deities. <laughs> I have one sort of story. One Japanese uh, who, who visited Tibet, just after that visit, he came to see me. And then uh, he mentioned to me the Buddha's teaching based on compassion. However, in some temple in Tibet, very wrathful deities there. Uh, so one night, so after seeing these wrathful deity, he lost his sleep. <laughs> Too much fear. <laughs> and he asked me why Buddha's teaching is compassionate sort of teaching. Then this wrathful deity. So like that, one particular sort of individual may be some useful. Otherwise, the, through training, you have the feeling. Entire sentient being, including so-called these kasachuti, enemies, uh, negative kasachas, yes. uh, negative s s ghost, ghost ray, Lungs. spirits, oh, ghost, but um, spirit. These also send a being. If you show them your love, they also respond. So then, through that way, you see, uh, according to my own daily experience or practice, see, I have no enemy, including spirit or what sort of bad spirit. No, no, negative spirit. Everything. One quotation, Yurda. Target ring. Just what time did you draw a decision? You don't have to tell or don't have to say. Just what time did you draw a decision? So Master Shandi Deva in his Bodhisattva Charya Avatara says, "Today I actually call on everyone in front of the Buddhas to to the feast of Buddhahood, enlightenment, as well as in the meantime, you know, higher rebirths and so forth. And so, therefore, everyone be happy." So very good, such practice. So it is possible. Step by step, our mental attitude can change. As a result, you feel much happier. No source of fear, nothing. Like that. I think it's No questions. Yeah. Yes. So. So you got, you gave me several answers actually, and I would like to, I would like to continue on this oh, point. Now, you know the limited mind mm -hmm. or consciousness. It is important to know the sensorial level consciousness. Mm -hmm. Compassion, even anger. Uh, with sixth mind, not sensorial level, I a am. brain also, 
Now, sensorial consciousness mainly depends on these uh, front Prefrontal, areas. the frontal oh. areas, yes. So, what called mandala or something? Mm -hmm. Mandala. Yes. Oh. Usually, it's the anger attachment you see develop. I understand. So, is it that? So, then, quite simple, I think, uh, when we uh, deep sleep, oh, this brain completely rest, but anger can develop, can, can experience, and particularly dream, dreaming, similarly attachment. So these combined with mental state, not sensorial level. So now when we say training of our mind is mental state, not sensorial thing. I understand. Oh. So that brings me, that brings exactly what you said to the next question. And by the way, so during sleep, our brain does not rest. During sleep, there is a repetition of, of what happened before. So in fact, during sleep... That's not necessary. <laughs> some people, in you some see, people, dream, have yeah. the experience. Yes, you yes. See, in dream, one my friend, he, when he reached Dharmsala, in his previous dream, when he was still in Tibet, he actually dreamt whole valley of Dharmsala. So when he reached Dharmsala, he, at the beginning, he felt, oh, I have been here. Been here. Vu. Yes. So, so this is not memory of past, but you see, seeing future. That is the future. Exactly. <laughs> we, we, know, we know that during sleep this happens, that we go back to the past and that we go in the future. But you pointed in your, in your speech, you pointed out something very, very important. I mean, that we can learn, that we can still train, and brain scientists know that. We can meditate in different kinds, and we can augment cognition, emotion, and attention. And those brain areas will change. However, my question to you is now, we know that the brain has, for every capacity, a critical period. So emotion, actually a child experiences during, right after birth, as you say, and if the first two years do not provide what is necessary, this capacity, a critical period closes, and it's very difficult to turn the wheel back. And when it comes to what you pay lots of attention in your speech, and which I am a great believer in, and that is that we can train our cognitive abilities because the prefrontal cortex develops until late adolescence. But if this critical period is closed, it is also very, very, very difficult to train as, you know, efficiently. So we have to start very early. We have to start very early in order to achieve more of emotion and compassion training. Right. Now, the one sort of phenomenon after death, the uh, heart beating stop then blood circulation to brain stop. Uh, then very soon, the brain dead. Uh, but, and now, I think uh, several cases in India, as well as in Tibet, uh, and some different part of the world, so who have some uh, practitioner, some not practitioner. The after clinically, after death, body remain very fresh, including my own tutor after clinically death. But next uh, 13 days, his physical remain 
very fresh. No smell, no sign of kasa okay. decaying. Hmm? And there are some cases, two weeks, three weeks. The longest, I think, uh, uh, four weeks. So now scientists, there's no explanation. So, so one, uh, our friend, one sci great scientist, brain specialist, uh, Richard Davidson of Wisconsin University. Now he already now uh, start one project to investigate such case and some simple equipment also now remain in, in Dhamsala. Whenever we got information, someone now after, uh, after the dead body still remain fresh, then I send a message, then consult the people, uh, go uh, to the place, and some wire also is put on dead bodies, uh, brain. So, so these are something phenomena. Now we have the, also the explanation is like that, the mind, the sensory level mind, uh, no gross, because of the subtle or uh, not much, or just, just consciousness or uh, depend on organs. Then sixth mind, dream time, little less, more subtler. Then deep sleep, even more subtler. The faint, even deeper uh, level. Then at the time of dying, deepest. So the subtle consciousness still in the body. So so these, you see, they not related with brain. Brain already dead because blood circulation stopped. But body remain fresh because in the most subtle uh, mind still in the body. So, like that. That is a dualist position. <laughs> hmm? That is a dualist position, Your Holiness. Now we have yeah. a different <laughs> subject. <laughs> we go to the night sky. So, I, I did, let, let me say a few sentences. The uh, till uh, later part of 20th century, the scientist simply brain. Beside the brain, no such cause of the consciousness or something. Mm -hmm. Now, later part of 20th century, uh, as, a, as an experiment, through training or meditation, some impact our brain because of plasticity. Brain plasticity. Dr. Keshet. We're talking about brain plasticity. Right. Mm -hmm. Or through meditation, some change. So there must be something which affect our brain. So now later part of 20th century, now some scientists begin to feel, oh, there is something. Uh, we need further investigation. I would agree. I would yes. certainly agree. So we see, okay. of course, the brain grow. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think consciousness is a very good subject for both traditions mm -hmm. and to learn a lot uh, from Buddhist right. tradition. But there is the cosmologist. <laughs> Professor Bartelmann. Your Holiness, my field is fundamental physics. I'm working in cosmology. And I can, first of all, confirm that the world is not flat. <laughs> What's that? Um, this. Sorry? Oh, this is okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this, the, the, the pursuit of this kind of purposeless, apparently purposeless knowledge is a source of, of immense happiness for individuals. And I'm wondering, do you think it is a responsible activity? Karsa, 
the uh, my, my question is since the 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 pursuit of purposeless apparently purposeless knowledge gives immense pleasure to individual people give immense happiness do you think it is also a responsible activity to do I think the every sentient being including insects they love their life so they take care of their existence so then we human being certainly we love our life love ourselves so they want uh, to they survive as much as possible so now that no need any argument or any reason now on that basis since you want a healthy body you want healthy mind therefore you should pay Uh, some attention about training of mind and similarly physical exercise basic question is is it we love ourselves so if you truly love yourself and you should take care not only your body but also now obviously the too much mental sort of uh, too much emotion very harmful for our health so as i mentioned earlier not talking about next life not talking about heaven but simply deal with this life happy so uh, so then use various reasons mainly uh, scientific findings usually i do that So this would be the perspective of an individual pursuing science and i'm wondering what do you think the role of fundamental science for society is and what it would be for a healthy society yeah. oh. oh i think science is the source of knowledge for scientific research really trying to find the, the reality so as i mentioned earlier uh, till the later part of the 20th century the scientists mainly pay attention about matters now, now the later part of the 20th century a brain specialist now they begin to pay more attention about the so called consciousness or mind so now this first century is continuation of that century so i think the scientists for their own sort of knowledge not only external matters but also internal world so see when i sort of uh, participate meeting with scientists i usually used to say they are meeting two purpose one purpose simply expand our knowledge uh so the uh, up to later part of the century the science just pay attention about uh, matters particles which can measure uh, which can test now later part of the century uh, now begin to uh, sort of begin to start curiosity what is consciousness what is mind so this continuously you see now carry i have one sort of story one occasion in japan one brain specialist uh, i think uh, i think one noble i think lord or something 
about, about science. So he, I, so when, when we met, he uh, simply, you see, beside the brain, existence of brain, existence of mind, he do not believe that. But meantime, recent days, his son passed away. So a lot of worry. If this worry related with brain only, then operate brain. Then the worry no longer there. <laughs> See, does, he does not accept mind, such as mind, the, beside the brain. He does not accept that. But he himself experiencing that. <laughs> so the, uh, now to, today, people, the explanation, or the second purpose of our meeting is the world passing through too much emotion problem. So through religious or through Eastern sort of philosophy, may not sort of cover entire humanity. Now science is the whole world believes science. So scientific finding, through scientific finding, based on scientific finding, we can teach people peace of mind is important. Like that. In your, in your address in the beginning, you mentioned the importance of, uh, of the moral principle. Yes. And I'm wondering what moral principle should science apply both in the acquisition of knowledge and in the passing of knowledge to the next, to the next generation? What's that? What? No, they this is through scientists, uh, through scientific sort of finding, as I mentioned earlier, more compassionate mind, very useful for their health. Uh, and the scientists also, as I mentioned earlier, that Japanese scientist, a lot of worry because uh, his uh, son passed away. So, uh, so think uh, altruistic. Others' well-being. See, so your mind become more wider. Same problem. If you if you sort of facing problem, same problem. Look, only that problem appears unbearable. Same problem. Look from wider perspective. So same problem. But your mental level, oh, it's okay. One problem, but okay. So therefore, the, these, I mean, scientific clay, we can explain. And mainly, as I mentioned earlier, the, because of the uh, medical scientist, they're very useful, very useful. So in order to promote the happy world, compassionate world, the other sort of what's today, uh, what's this, uh, education, nationalism, and the, the, on the basis of I, I, self-centered attitude in education. Usually, you see, we uh, also get uh, such sort of education there. I think a problem, I feel, human nature more compassionate. But once we join education, in education, also they not much so pay attention about this inner value, only brain. And then smart brain eventually become disposal of anger, hatred, jealousy, self-centered attitude. So now, scientists, I think, should speak more. You see, the warm-heartedness brings your body element more calm.
if you see the religious basis telling these things, then out of seven billion, over one billion non-believer. So these people say, oh, that's religious, religious talk. <laughs> I'm non-believer. So, so no relevant. But if mm, through scientific way to explain warm-heartedness, and firstly, you see, the, even selfish, I mean, taking care maximum your own health. This is scientific sort of, on the basis of a scientific finding, really convince, convincing. That's my view. What do you think? <laughs> I'm wondering, huh? listen, listen, listening to, to what you just said, I'm wondering, do you think that humility is an important aspect of the pursuit of science and of teaching science? Kasa. Kare. What? What? Humility. Whether humility. Humility. Yes. I think first day of birth, mother smiling, although language not yet developed, uh, but emotionally, biologically, the tremendous love between mother and child. So these are, uh, we are social animal, biological factor. In the, the child's survival depend entirely on mother's care. So now today, individual, the cause of survival of individual happily depend on the community. No matter how powerful one individual put in uh, in in remote area, lonely, he or he, she or he cannot survive without human community. No power, no human uh, human being can survive. We are a social animal. So therefore, the, it is extremely important community. So. We should know that my survival, my future, depend on the community. So take care about community as much as take care yourself, because your happiness, your successful, your ultimately your survival depend on the society. Now, nation's level, Germany is a very tough Germany people, hard working. I think from ashes of Second World War, you, Kasa, you rose, oh, very successful. Uh, but you are part of the Europe. So it is really wonderful, very realistic. You are the leading nation of European Union. Wonderful. Now, uh, further sort of, I say they looking further. The whole world, one sort of community. East, Eastern world depend West. Western world depend East. Similarly, North and South. And the. Uh, so the global economy, no national boundary. And then global warming, quite serious. No differences, different continent, different nation. So now time come. We should, I said, think, global level, we should think about whole humanity. So that's... This is this is not as I mean, because of the based on religious belief, but reality. That's the reality.
Like that. Your Holiness. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have some argument? Sorry? Do you have some argument? <laughs> no.